The FAA has ordered hundreds of jet engines we checked out after a Southwest Airlines deadly explosion. I'm Hannah Doba with more on the mandatory inspection and what the pilot of that flight is now saying. Good morning, Southwest Montana, 630 on this Thursday. That is our top story this half hour. The Federal Aviation Administration will soon begin ordering U.S. airlines to inspect engine fan blades that have reached a certain number of takeoffs and landings. Now, the development follows Tuesday's deadly engine explosion involving a Southwest Airlines jet. The incident marked the first passenger fatality on a U.S. carrier since 2009. Hen Adoba has our latest from New York. Federal airline regulators plan to roll out mandatory inspections of certain engine fan blades, looking for signs of fatigue or fractures. The fan blade, uh, it separated in two places. NTSB investigators believe one of the fan blades in the left engine of Southwest Flight 1380 broke off at the connection point Tuesday, ripping through the engine and sending metal debris into the wing and through a cabin window. They said there's a hole and uh, someone went out. 43-year-old Jennifer Reardon, a married mother of two from New Mexico, was wearing her seatbelt when she was nearly sucked out of that window. A medical examiner says she died from blunt force trauma to the head, neck, and torso. Engine failures like this uh, should not occur, obviously. In the wake of the tragedy, many of the passengers on the harrowing flight have called Captain Tammy Jo Schultz, one of the first women to become a Navy fighter pilot, a hero. She was so cool and calm and put together in, in the face of a crisis. After the plane's engine blew out, it tilted about 40 degrees to the left. 22 minutes later, Schultz managed to land the Boeing 737 safely. In a joint statement released late Wednesday, the Southwest captain and co-pilot expressed appreciation for the outpouring of support, adding, we all feel we were simply doing our jobs. And Adoba, CBS News, New York. Now, Southwest planes sped into Philadelphia International Airport at 190 miles an hour. Southwest says the 18-year-old Boeing 737 was just inspected two days prior to the accident. The NTSB plans to review its maintenance history. Wow, what Crazy a story. There. What a story. Meantime, 632, uh, meteorologist Matt Elwell steps in to talk about our Thursday, some nicer weather for a couple of days, and we're super happy that you uh, I that. think... No, I'm, looks like a lot of us are going to get stuff done yeah, yeah. You know, as we get into at least the first part of the weekend. Our temperatures this morning, not bad, into the low 30s, upper 20s for the most part. I do expect our daytime highs to top out into the 50s today. This is going to be our stepping block toward the weekend. It looks like much of the weekend will be on the warmer side. We do have some changes on the way. We're going to go out to the Billion Auto Weather patio here in a couple minutes and talk about that. I'm going to put away my Christmas lights. Na napping on the hammock. <laughs> that is go. the top of my to-do <laughs> list. I promise I will get it done, honey. <laughs> Meantime, uh, another national story this morning. Bettering border security was an issue presidential candidate Donald Trump brought up often. And it hasn't, his stance on that has not dimmed at all since he won the White House. John Lawrence has our story. Operational control. That's what the Trump administration wants along the border of the United States and Mexico. We have immigration laws and we need to enforce them uh, no matter who uh, is breaking those laws and that's what we're committed to doing. President Trump has called for thousands of National Guard members to help patrol the border until a wall is complete. Arizona Governor Doug Ducey has already deployed a couple hundred troops and he says more are coming soon. Think of it as a, a surge of badges to the border in support of the Border Patrol so that they have more feet, um, more boots on the ground so that they can do the law enforcement mission. Ducey and Secretary of Homeland Security Kirstjen Nielsen got a first-hand look at what's happening along parts of the Arizona border with Mexico Wednesday. Nielsen also toured border towns in California, a state that's experiencing a revolution against sanctuary areas, according to President Trump. Mr. Trump also blasted Golden State Governor Jerry Brown on Wednesday for trying to back out of the National Guard at the border. However, hours later, Nielsen tweeted that Brown will be providing support. Until we can have operational control of the border, the National Guard will be here supporting the, the men and women of DHS. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Now, Nielsen says the number of undocumented immigrants is rising, citing data from March. She also says that the DHS has requested Congress to grant the department more authority. 
Closer to home, Montana Governor Steve Bullock yesterday issued an executive order declaring a state of emergency because of rising floodwaters. These are pictures taken earlier in the week from Chester. Meantime, Liberty County asking residents on the north side of the tracks to be aware that dike could breach uh, within the next few hours, be ready to evacuate or at least prepare to evacuate. State of emergency applies to seven Montana counties, including Ponderé, Hill, Blaine, Valley, Toole, Liberty and Petroleum along with the town of Chester and the Fort Belknap Indian Reservation. And Butte Plaza's only anchor store will be closing its doors. Herberger's, which is owned by Bonton Stores, announced on Wednesday that they will be winding down operations. Now in February, the company filed for bankruptcy. Herberger's has five other locations in Montana in addition to the one in the Butte Plaza. When we called Herberger's to see how many people would be affected by the closing, we were told to contact public relations representative for the company. They did not return our calls. Yesterday, Butte Plaza's management denied the store is closing. Bonton said it will provide more details about the liquidation plans and the going out of business sales at its following stores, approval by the winning bid of the bankruptcy court. Well, they have been reported around Montana, waves of threatening calls claiming to be from local law enforcement. In this week's Fraud Watch, MTN's Jonathan Ambarian looks at how you can identify this type of scam. The so-called jury duty scam resembles many other common scam calls. A caller will say you failed to show up for required jury duty. Someone will pose as a law enforcement to officers telling you that you have to pay today or they're coming to arrest you. The Montana Office of Consumer Protection says it's not one of the most common scams they see, but that can actually make it tougher to identify. That can be an issue for consumers because they're not used to seeing that call or getting that call as much as you would for the IRS or the grandparent or lottery scam. This type of caller can often seem believable. They'll disguise their number so caller ID shows them as a legitimate agency. Most of the time they've done some sort of research, so if they're calling somebody in Yellowstone County, they'll pretend to be with the Yellowstone County Sheriff's Office. If they're calling someone in Lewis and Clark County, they'll pretend to be with the Lewis and Clark County Sheriff's Office. But because they claim to be local law enforcement, you can easily check if it's a scam by calling that agency yourself. Best thing to do is to either look up in your phone book or to go onto the internet and look up the number for, for that agency and call the number that you have, have received for them. Investigators say if someone demands immediate payment, especially from a fast cash option, it's likely to be a scam. If there was ever an arrest warrant issued in your name, you would never receive a phone call saying that they're, they're going to be at your doorstep in four hours to, to arrest you. In Helena, Jonathan Ambarian, MTN News. Now, if you have questions about the jury duty scam or any other scam, you can contact the Office of Consumer Protection. You can also find more information this morning on our websites. Always good to hear those tips. If it's too good to be, to be true, true, it's too good to be true, people. There you go. <laughs> when Montana This Morning returns after a quick break, what does the future look like for Northwestern Energy's resources? When we come back, we'll take a closer look. But first, we're going to take a closer look with Gail King at what's coming up at 7 on CBS This Morning. Good morning to you ahead on CBS This Morning. We'll hear from the family of the woman almost sucked out of the window in the deadly Southwest Airlines flight. Plus, Times Editor-in-Chief is here with their new list of the 100 most influential people in the world. We'll see you 7 o'clock on the dot.